good afternoon <coughs> this is a second session the and the speaker is uh, sanjay kumar and the topic is the assessment of sub epithelial lesions of upper gi tract <coughs> please thank you ma'am would like to thank professor arora and his team for giving me this opportunity the topic is very interesting and it has uh, become more interesting after the advent of eus so basically what are the sub epithelial lesions earlier we used to call them sub mucosal lesions but it used to give an impression that they are arising from sub mucosa so the uh, uh, name has been changed to sel or sub epithelial lesions we find them one in 300 endoscopies i would say it's even more common maybe one in 100 nowadays so the question is why evaluate acls because 13% of them can be malignant like lymphoma or metastasis and 8% like just have malignant potential so on endoscopy how are you likely to encounter usually they are incidental as i said but sometimes they can be symptomatic like gi bleed or obstruction and thirdly they can also be referred to you for an endoscopy once they have been diagnosed on imaging for evaluation so if you on table if you find an acl how you proceed so first thing is to ensure that this is an acl so to ensure that you have to uh, do an endoscopy with more care try to rule out an ext uh, extrinsic impression by observing the respiratory movements because an extrinsic impression will move differently than the luminal wall and you can also change the position of the patient to a certain and then you should have a uh, close forceps in your hand to do a probing maneuver you can also resort to biopsy eus and other things which we'll come to later on the important thing is that nbi and image enhanced endoscopy do not help you in evaluation of acl so this was a study which clearly showed that eus scores over endoscopy in differentiating uh, between a mucosal and extra luminal compression so on table you assess this shape size location central lubrication surface ulceration color pillow and pillow sign so this is a pillow sign uh, which is characteristic of a lipoma so if you have an acl which is looking uh, like a yellow hue and you press a closed biopsy forceps you it gives you an impression like a your head uh, uh, presses over the pillow you can denude the mucosa and see the uh, yellow tissue inside also then this is heterotopic pancreas or ectopic pancreas with the central amplification and a smooth small nodule if you take a biopsy from heterotopic pancreas you will find that uh, there is uh, gastric mucosa plus uh, you will find acini like it is seen here and also the ductal structures so these acls like lipoma pancreatic rest and varices these are the ones which do not need further evaluation once you are sure that these are varices or pancreatic rest or lipoma you don't go any further and also if the acl is symptomatic it has come with bleed or obstruction then you don't evaluate you immediately go for resection so these are the four situations you don't evaluate so there are other acls like this in the shown in this photograph uh, which you have to evaluate like the first one on the left uh, looks like a varix but it was actually a gist and the bottom one on the right looks like a uh, 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 acl on uh, uh, endoscopy but turned out to be a hepatic cyst which was compressing from outside so you can have variety of manifestations of acl and in these cases you have to go further so what further you will do you may either take a biopsy directly or you can do an eus so this acg guidelines 2023 for sub epithelial lesions are clearly said that you should avoid bite on bite biopsy until us has confirmed that this is a non vascular lesion otherwise you may end in a trouble you will take bite on bite biopsy and then patient will have bleed so us is the natural next step in this cases except for situations where the, it was a symptomatic and you have directly gone for resection so while embarking on eus what all you need you need a 7.5 megahertz probe you can also use mini probes 12 to 20 megahertz for smaller lesions water installation always helps in this regard you can do a gentle compression by minimally inflated balloon and of course you have elastography contrast eus and tissue acquisition also so this is the way you put your probe on a acl put it in the center to look for the ecogenicity then put it on the side once you press on the side you will be uh, you will be able to appreciate the uh, layer of origin better so this is how one should do the maneuver so like this one is arising from fourth layer you can very well appreciate that this is a hypoechoic lesion and it is arising from fourth layer so most likely it could be a leiomyoma or gist so you ascertain two things layer of origin 
and ecogenicity. So you should know which layer gives to what kind of lesions. So second layer, leomyoma, granular cell tumor. Fourth layer is most common, gist and leomyoma. And then majority of them arise from third layer. Then ecogenicity is equally important. Only anechoic cyst and anechoic lesions are cyst and lymphangiomas. Hyperechoic, that means lympho, uh, lipoma only. Others are hypoechoic or isoechoic. So all gist, carcinoids, leomyoma, schwannomas, glomus tumor, everything is hypoechoic. So th there are some examples like this is a lipoma which is arising from the third layer. You can see a duplication cyst. You can be sure of a duplication cyst because it is uh, anechoic and there is posterior acoustic enhancement. This is a duodenal carcinoid arising from second layer. This is a leomyoma. Again, you can very well appreciate that it is arising from fourth layer. Granular cell tumor of the esophagus. GIST, which uh, perhaps is the most important uh, SEL which we want to diagnose and diagnose fully to ascertain whether it is a pre-malignant condition or not. So what all you should do further, once you have evaluated, you can do further studies like you can do a contrast enhancement and elastography. On contrast enhancement, uh, you can differentiate GIST from other tumors, usually leomyoma. Uh, GIST is a hyper-enhancing lesion and uh, it uh, may also give a heterogeneous enhancement as uh, seen in the lower photograph. Now features suggesting malignancy on contrast TUS is intratumoral abnormal vascularity with irregular vessels and heterogeneous enhancement. So these are the two important factors. You can also see non-enhancing spots in, uh, in between the, in the center of the tumor. Then you have US elastography. Again, this helps to differentiate GIST and uh, other tumors. GIST has a higher stiffness. This study had shown that the cutoff of 22.7 kilopascals is more than 100% sensitive and 95% specific to differentiate GIST from leomyoma. Then comes the role of tissue acquisition. So in most of the SELs, uh, barring few which I mentioned in the beginning, you have to acquire tissue to establish a diagnosis, to plan the treatment, and to, immuno, uh, to do immunohistochemistry to differentiate between GIST, leomyoma, schwannoma, etc., and also for risk stratification by looking at the mitotic figures. We know that the larger GIST have more malignant potential, but sometimes smaller cysts with high mitotic figures also have uh, reasonable malignant potential. So you have to have both the information with you. Tissue acquisition can be done by variety of methods, right from standard biopsy to jumbo biopsy, special sink biopsy, of course, FNA, FNB, and then if you resect, then you can get the tissue. So issues during sampling, uh, you have to choose a proper needle. It has been shown that FNB is distinctly better than FNA in this regard. And Francine needle from Boston and Procore from uh, Cook, both have been shown to be equally good. So as I said, FNB is definitely better. This has been shown clearly. There is a term called SYNC, that is the single incision needle knife biopsy. You make an incision over the SEL and then biopsy uh, the material inside. And studies have shown that this is superior to taking a deep on deep uh, bite on bite biopsy. This was a study by Suprabhat Giri and Sridhar Sundaram from our country and they showed that the mucosal incision assisted biopsy is better uh, than uh, uh, than uh, routine biopsy but is not better than US guided FNB. You can also do IHC studies on this. So I would like to summarize by saying that the stepwise approach is critical in evaluation of SELs. Endoscopic appearance gives you a reasonable impression and dictates further in, for the evaluation of for, in some situations. EUS is the best modality to assess these lesions. And adjunct techniques like contrast EUS and elastography help in differentiation but do not substitute biopsy. In most cases, you have to take a sample, EUS, FNB, with end cutting needles is the best and between suction and stylet I don't think there is much difference and MIAB that means mucosal incision associated biopsy is a good alternative in select cases. I think this is a flowchart but I will skip, I will take the questions. Thank you.